All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Open Tofu Community Q&A. Um, I'm uh, very excited to be here. This is my sixth time in, uh, in Japan. I'm still very happy to come every, every single time. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here with, uh, with all of you. Um, so uh, the, this is meant to be a com community Q&A. Uh, so I've got to, I'm going to start uh, by presenting a little bit about the project, uh, the folks behind it, uh, why it matters, all of that. Um, and then after that, we've got some time for, uh, uh, for any questions you guys might have, uh, any discussion you might want to have. Uh, so this is kind of a rough outline that, uh, that we'll be going through. Uh, one important part to start with is uh, <laughs> what the heck is open tofu? Hopefully, uh, most people here know what it is. Uh, if not, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go over it a little bit. Then talking about why it matters. Um, the progress we've made so far, who's behind the project, uh, how to get started, how to contribute, um, and all of that. Um, just uh, two little things uh, before we start. Um, I left you guys some stickers on the chair, so feel free to take those. Um, they're super cute. Um, very happy to ha have, uh, have distributed them. And second thing is, um, I also want to just state that I'm a huge fan of HashiCorp. Um, very grateful for what Mitchell has done for the, the community. Many, many great open source projects or formerly open source projects. Um, I'm a big fan of Terraform and I uh, strongly hope that they will join us uh, uh, in the Linux Foundation uh, with, uh, with their projects in the future. Don't know if that'll happen, uh, but I'm still crossing my fingers. All right, so let's get started. So a little bit about me, I'm Sebastian Stadel. Uh, I'm one of the core contributors of OpenTofu. Um, I'm also the CEO of a company called Scalar that uh, builds tools on top of OpenTofu. And finally, um, I'm a guest lecturer at Carnegie Mellon uh, on topics of entrepreneurship, technology, and whatever else they want me to talk about. Um, so first of all, uh, <laughs> What is Open Tofu besides the, uh, the project with the silliest name? You might have seen this meme on Twitter or uh, circulating. Um, and uh, w once, uh, <laughs> once we'll go over it, it'll make a lot more sense. But essentially, Open Tofu, it's an open source continuation of, uh, of Terraform. So um, Terraform uh, used to be an open source project. Uh, sadly, uh, it, it no longer is. Um, some people say it's an open-ish source project. Some people say it's closed source. I'm on the side of saying it's closed source, but you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, and along with a lot of other folks in the community, uh, we decided that, uh, that, uh, that we would uh, continue the project. So just uh, really quickly, this is, kind of, uh, this is kind of what OpenTofu is like or Terraform is like. It's a declarative model for, uh, for writing code uh, that's going to manage your infrastructure. Um, so you can see here, you, this is for, like a, for Amazon EC2. This is how you write code that's going to manage your uh, EC2 machines. In this case here, it's a, I think it's a T2 micro. Um, and so, but this, uh, I'm showing this so that you get a kind of a picture for those of you who are a little bit new of, uh, of what we're talking about. Um, all right, so this, uh, this goes a little bit back to uh, why we started, uh, why we forked. Um, uh, why we forked Terraform uh, and why we contributed it to the Linux Foundation. So we believe, um, and we put out a manifesto, and like all this is public information, but we believe that Terraform is a little bit more than just a software project. Um, it's used as a language. That's really, really important. And because it's used as a language, a lot of organizations have built amazing things on top of it. And so as a foundation, for a lot of important things, um, it's just way too important to be uh, in the hands of a single entity. Um, and so when, uh, when HashiCorp decided that they would no longer have uh, Terraform be open source, um, the, the way we saw that is it's not just uh, um, a product that was being closed source, it's the foundation for how a lot of you know, millions of folks deploy and manage all of their cloud resources, and increasingly their configurations for Datadog, for DNS, and for just a host of other things. Um, and uh, yeah, and so it's a, it's, it's a foundation for a lot of things. And because a lot of organizations that were using Terraform, you know, sometimes we compete, sometimes we collaborate. Uh, the Linux Foundation provided a great home, a great uh, place uh, for a 
neutral grounds for all of us to be able to build on this, uh, and, and build this project. Um, so I don't know how many of you are familiar with the whole incubation to, to graduation process, but uh, you have to have five, a minimum of five organizations that contribute to a project before it can uh, graduate. Um, we were almost a dozen when we, uh, when we started out, so we went through the whole incubation process very, very quickly. Um, and now uh, Open Tofu is a full project of, uh, of uh, under the Linux Foundation. A little bit of on, on the timeline. Uh, <laughs> this all went so fast. Um, it, it's crazy to think that this is just a few months old. So August 10, um, HashiCorp uh, decides that uh, Terraform would no longer be open source. Um, and they re-licensed, uh, so they, they announced that they would license future versions of Terraform under what's called the business source license. If you don't know what it is, uh, it's essentially a license that says that you're not allowed to use, make production use of Terraform, so you're not allowed, not allowed to use Terraform in production unless you, you qualify under some special exemptions. And those special exemptions are a little bit vague. Um, and so if you work in a big organization, you don't know whether you can use Terraform in production or not. Um, and you don't know if, and maybe you are, maybe you think you are allowed to use it today. That does not give you a guarantee you'll be able to use it in the future. So um, we all got, in, there, in the open source community, we all got very alarmed. And so we published a, you no, know, four days later. <laughs> Those were crazy four days. Uh, we got together, we all discussed what we, our beliefs were our, and our commitment to open source. and we drafted and published an, a manifesto that expressed uh, our beliefs and our views and our desires and why it is incredibly important for, um, for the project to, to live on um, to, in an open source manner. Waited a little over a week for some uh, response from them. Uh, sadly, did not get a response. Um, and so we went forward with the, with the fork and uh, published that uh, on September 5th is when we, we had the first uh, uh, first kind of publish uh, of, our, of the repository. Um, and then uh, in fast forward a couple weeks from then, uh, so barely a, a month over uh, since, since it got closed source, uh, we were in Bilbao at the Open Source Summit and um, announced that OpenTofu was uh, joined part, as part of the Linux Foundation. And I'm uh, happy to announce that uh, I know a lot of people have been waiting for this. Uh, on December 15, we will have the first release candidates. So we will finally be able to use that and, uh, and start migrating uh, and replacing uh, legacy Ter Terraform with it. Um, cute logo, I know. Um, by the way, a little parentheses, uh, I've, I've, uh, I've loved uh, playing around with the, uh, with the, lo the, the little tofu icon, and you'll see that shortly. Um, so since we, since we announced that uh, on, on the 20th, um, OpenTofu has been one of the fastest growing communities uh, on GitHub and, and um, by all sorts of different metrics. 16,000 stars on GitHub. Uh, there's now 57 committers uh, and 500 commits in the last couple months across developers in four different continents. Um, the, the speed of development is only accelerating. We've merged 340 PRs. We're merging 15 a week. Uh, those numbers are growing um, as, we're, uh, as we're preparing for, uh, for release and, and for ongoing uh, development. Um, <coughs> so um, as we are nearing, so that's 10 days from now. Uh, as we're nearing the, uh, the, the release candidates, uh, a lot of folks have been on Twitter and, and other, uh, otherwise asking us how, uh, what's the best way to get started, what's the best way to contribute. Let me start with the contribution portion. Um, like any open source project, the, like it thrives on the size and involvement and engagement of the community. This is no exception. And uh, there's a, we have a lot of folks that are waiting on bug reports, waiting on ideas, waiting on um, engagement just to, uh, just to figure out uh, and how, how, to, how to help you guys. Um, a very, very po uh, important portion of all this is also just evangelizing. Like, I'm here, you guys are here because we all believe in open source and one of the most powerful things that we can do is just getting more folks to, uh, to, to use open tofu and to uh, switch over from, from Terraform for it. Um, there's already a lot of folks contributing to the project. If you want to submit a patch, that's awesome, but uh, 
obviously not necessary. Uh, right now, uh, right now, the the most important thing is uh, is just uh, it just the evangelization and uh, and uh, helping the uh, helping the community grow. All right, so there's two parts here uh, that I would like to go into a little, little bit more depth. Um, the first thing is, uh, if you are, can I get a quick show of hands? Who he here has used Terraform in some capacity? Okay, that's like 75%, that's great. Uh, so this section here is mostly for, for, uh, for uh, us folks. Um, the, easier, the easiest way to think about this is, um, uh, like in any sort of large organization, you've got a distribution of, uh, of projects that have you might be using 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 versions of Terraform. If you are on any version that is, pre, uh, that is earlier than 1.5.7, then uh, OpenTofu is not relevant to you yet. Just keep, think, you know, keep upgrading those projects until you get to uh, the latest and last open source version of Terraform. Once you get to 1.5.7, that's when you want to migrate uh, and switch over, as you normally would to, one, to Terraform 1.6. That's when you would uh, to move to open to uh, open tofu. If and obviously if you're starting a new project, um, instead of starting it on closed source Terraform or legacy Terraform, uh, strongly encourage starting that project on on open tofu. Um, and then the last part of this is that uh, we've made a commitment to maintain compatibility for as long as we possibly can. And what that means is that you know. Uh, Open Tofu is a drop-in replacement for Terraform, so that means in any of your projects that would uh, that would be on on, on otherwise on Terraform 1.6, you just start using Open Tofu and everything will be will work uh, as is. For later versions of legacy Terraform uh, 1.7, the the alpha is out. Um, we will continue for as long as we can to maintain that. And, uh, and to make a drop-in. So that in an organization, you can have some teams, some projects that mo use OpenTofu, and, and that can co-live with, uh, with Terraform um, so that you can migrate at your own velocity. Um, the workflow kind of looks like this, uh, because it's eas much easier to comprehend that way. Um, so upgrading to OpenTofu is uh, once you get to 1.5.7. Uh, if so long as you're, you're there, as long as it's open source, just continue upgrading um, uh, Terraform open source. Um, but if you're starting a new project, uh, just go ahead and start that with, uh, with, the, with open Tofu. Now for the 25% of us that uh, have not used Terraform yet, um, the reasons for using open Tofu are the same reasons as for using infrastructure as code in general. Um, your code's gonna be more maintainable, it's going to be more readable. Uh, OpenTofu provides you with a much better abstraction for uh, thinking about resources and collaborating on resources uh, than um, CloudFormation or even from you know, Chef and other things used, to, used to, for provisioning. And there's a very fast and very helpful uh, uh, community of resources uh, and you know, folks that are there to, uh, to help um, uh, help with all that. So uh, if you're not using infrastructure as code today, strongly recommend uh, moving in that direction. And uh, OpenTofu is a great place to go from zero to one. Um, <clears throat> so what's next? Uh, after the December 15 release, um, we think we should be able to have the st uh, have graduate that release candidate into a st stable GA release on December 20th. Uh, obviously, it's the Christmas period, so uh, there might, no, we, we might decide that, uh, that we want to postpone that a little bit. But after that, there's going to be a very rapid succession of, uh, of improvements, uh, bug fixes, et cetera. And uh, the 1.6 version of Terraform with the first version of OpenTofu uh, will you know, maintain parity that way. Going forward, for as long as we possibly can, um, OpenTofu will be a drop-in replacement. Uh, and so that means as for your projects, there's just a few places where you'll, where you're, you'll uh, need to, uh, to update uh, some, some names, uh, but otherwise uh, the binaries are going to be very similar and, and the effort involved in, in replacements um, is, is very, uh, very easy. And uh, the last thing is um, 
uh, if you go to GitHub, go to Open Tofu and go to Issues, there's a ton of great ideas there. Um, we are in the process of going through all of those to figure out what we would want. Um, and so uh, we'll publish in the future kind of what our, you know, what our plans are with, uh, with all of those. But um, the first priority is that it's a drop-in, fully compatible uh, replacement. And, uh, and then over the long term, uh, we will add things that uh, Terraform might not have. And, and so over the long term, it'll be a faster, higher velocity, better project uh, as we draw from you know, the innovation from the entire community. Um, all right, so let's move on to the, uh, the Q&A section. Um, there's three questions that we very frequently get, so I will just kind of ask those of myself and answer them. Uh, but the first question that we, we very often get is, are, you know, is, are the folks from, um, uh, from OpenTofu, are we uh, going to fork all the providers? Um, and the answer is we don't have to. The, the providers are still licensed under an open source license. There's some, uh, like the, the big, uh, the, the most frequently used providers, uh, they're under the HashiCorp repo. And so we fork that so that we can create a re registry so that we can um, uh, pr you know, provide, um, pr provide continued support for, the, uh, for all those providers. But, f um, but the development that happens in those providers, the developer, um, as well as all of them, are, it's pretty much uh, done by the by the vendor behind that, that, uh, that provider. So most of the work on the AWS provider is done by AWS employees. Most of the work done on the Datadog provider is done by Datadog employees. Um, and then, uh, and so there's really um, no problem there. And we're also th you know, working with some other organizations on, on figuring out what would be some good standards to have for providers for the long term. But, um, the, uh, there's no need to fork any of the providers, uh, there's n and, uh, uh, other than just for the, re the registry's own needs. And, um, and so, uh, so there's no problem there. Another question we frequently get is um, for the, the Terraform 1.7 alpha. Um, so aside from some issues of, uh, uh, of you know, legal issues of, uh, of you know, patents being filed, et cetera, um, as so far as we know, we will be able to have a drop-in replacement for 1.7 as well, and uh, and so work on on that is uh, is underway in, in some places. Um, we will have more clarity over that as uh, as um, uh, as we get to understand a little bit more of the direction that 1.7 is going in. Um, and the uh, the last thing is uh, the last question we frequently get is whether there's going to be other forks, whether we are going to be forking other uh, hash, uh, other of uh, HashiCorp's closed source projects. The answer is we, as an open to tofu community, uh, are not. Uh, we are focused 100% on keeping uh, the spirit of, of Terraform alive in open tofu. Um, but there are uh, some projects underway for. Um, uh, for forking some of their other projects. And uh, OpenBow, for example, is one such uh, project. There's uh, some, some uh, an, a project, in, a part of the Linux Foundation that's now incubating. Um, and uh, incubating meaning there's, you know, it's going through the Linux Foundation's process by, uh, for, for maturing. And, uh, and so if you use Vault today, then you can consider um, helping, joining the community uh, for OpenBow and, uh, and helping uh, helping folks uh, out there to, um, um, to to graduate that. Um, so uh, before I move on to the last little parts, do we have any questions? Hard ones, easy ones. Go for it. Uh, about the provider, you mentioned that uh, before you might go direct different direction than uh, uh, Terraform, but if Terra, uh, HashiCorp is maintaining the providers, does that mean that at some point they will be like, incompatible with OpenTofu? Uh, yeah, great question. So the question is, uh, what happens if the provide if HashiCorp maintains uh, maintains and decides to go in a different direction for the yeah. for a provider? Um, so it's it would be 
first of all, the, the only provider that HashiCorp makes that where they have complete control over is HashiCorp's own provider for Terraform, uh, or the ones for Vault, et cetera. And so those are the ones that it has complete control over. Um, they can do whatever with, with they want with that. It's not really uh, as relevant. Um, for the providers, for all of the like the big cloud providers, uh, as well as the uh, the big software vendors, Datadog and, and, and other a few others, those um, they're still open source licensed, um, and the makers of those providers are not HashiCorp, right? They're, the makers are AWS, Google, and and Oracle, and and all all of those. It's it's uh, we're working with them, but it's in their interest to have the work that they do with the provider be uh, compatible with OpenTofu, with um, Pulumi is another one, and uh, and um, and and Terraform itself. And so maybe in the future, the entire world would decide that uh, to to go in the, in the proprietary closed source uh, direction. I don't think that's going to happen, and so we're not concerned of the, uh, of, of that happening. Um, and, uh, and, and that's why we're working on some standards so that we can agree on, agree on how the work on a provider would look like so that we can guarantee uh, ongoing, uh, ongoing compatibility for all of the projects built on uh, that interact with those providers. Great question. Thank you. Go for it. Hi, um, I work at Sakura Internet, which is a local cloud provider, and I'm the one working on the Terraform provider for Sakura Cloud. Cool. And um, my question is that right now, um, because of the license change in regards to Terraform, we're having to freeze our Terraform version, yep. and we're in the process of um, thinking about whether we want to switch to Open Tofu or pay to use Terraform. And at the end of the day, because as, I as much as I personally believe in open source, at the end of the day, in enterprise, um, it's a new project, so it's very difficult to gauge whether this project would actually continue on forward. And also there is the um, added um, fear that um, Terraf while OpenTofu says that it will be fully compatible with Terraform, um, at the end of the day, because we, ha we have to work on the Terraform provider as well, if OpenTofu starts adding new features and stuff like that, we're gonna have to um, support the Terraform provider and the OpenTofu provider as well. So um, from our point of view, um, it's added work. And also from our customer's point of view, um, it's very difficult to gauge whether OpenTofu has the actual longe longevity that would net us for to actually consider switching over to OpenTofu. So my question is that, um, first of all, where's the incentive for us to start using Open Tofu right now rather than maybe wait a year or two and see where the project goes? And also, um, from a provider developer point of view, um, will, it, will it be in such a way that we can continue working on the Terraform provider and it will still drop in work with Open Tofu in the future? Um, fantastic question. So the, 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 the way we're thinking, so first of all, there's, there's only one provider. So if you make a provider for, uh, for, for your product, that will work with OpenTofu and that will work with, uh, with, with Terraform. And um, in, in such case where some interfaces might change, uh, we're committed to, to working and, and, and making, making, to changing, ensuring that OpenTofu continues to work with all of the providers out there. So, the, so that's kind of what we mean by compatibility. Um, in terms of longevity, uh, one of the very, very cool things about the Linux Foundation is it provides a really good uh, framework for long-term success, uh, long-term project success. And so one of the requirements is having a technical steering committee to resolve uh, disagreements between committers uh, or, or between folks working on the project. Um, another one is to, ha is to ensure that there are enough um, se you know, separate, pro uh, separate organizations committing to, uh, yeah, contributing to the project to make sure that it's not beholden on like one or two or, or, or a small number of, of, uh, of projects. Um, of, the, uh, of the 57 f folks that have, uh, f that have made uh, con contributions in the last couple months, um, I don't know exactly what the, uh, what the, what the distribution of that um, is, but uh, there's a there's a number of there's a large number of folks that are not uh, that are just like 
I think Linus, uh, Linus was uh, talking about that earlier, where there's a lot of folks that come in that make one or two uh, patches, and and then there's like a long, uh, th and then there's like a, a, a core amount of folks that that uh, th that distri um, that contributes on a regular basis, um, and so how that like how that mix changes over time, don't really know, but it it now that there's you know several dozen people that have. Uh, contributed to the project in a manner or another, uh, that does provide a fair amount of redundancy to uh, to make sure the project persists. Um, and then, um, um, and then, like uh, over the over the long term, like what's the incentive? Um, personally, I believe that um, open communities tend to out innovate, um, you know, commercial uh, proprietary you know, small groups. That's not always the case, but most of the time it is. And, um, and so if you subscribe to that belief, then uh, th you know, the best ideas from people all over, all over, all over the world, um, then the incentive is that you're, this is a project that will eventually be uh, not just a drop-in replacement, but an entirely superior option, besides just the licensing issues. Um, and then like as a very, uh, uh, as another side note, um, there's, there's also just the philosoph philosophical point, where, which I strongly believe in open source. Um, and if there are two projects that are identical and one's open source and one's not, I personally believe that the, the moral choice uh, is to, to, make the, uh, to use the open source project and, and help in, in some manner. Um, uh, hopefully, I know my answer was a little bit long. Hopefully that, did I answer everything? Yeah, that answered okay. my question. I have one small question. Go for um, it. Are there any big um, corp, um, organizations or corporations that are currently uh, believing in open tofu and um, um, how do you say it, like going to contribute or currently contributing to the project? Uh, yeah, excellent question. I'm, uh, I can't speak for any of the large organizations. I've sp been specifically told not to uh, make any announcements of what some of those big organizations are doing. Um, but uh, there's two things I can, I can recommend. One, uh, go to the project go to all the committers, look at the companies uh, that those committers work at, and you'll, you'll get an answer to your question. Um, and then in addition to that, I'll, I'll kind of give a little bit of a, um, I, because I, I can't answer directly your question, but I can kind of give you a little bit of context. Um, if you think about the big cloud providers, Amazon and Fujitsu Cloud, and um, they really do not have an incentive. Like they don't really don't like um, not being in control of the user experience that their customers have, right? And so you can imagine a world in which, let's say you're, you're you know, a big, uh, big cloud provider starting with an A. Um, you might not be in love with the idea that the developer experience uh, that you know, your customers are having depends on uh, an organization that is, um, that is not aligned with, with your own organization. And so, they, you know, the, these big cloud providers, they want to be as close to the customer as possible. And because of that, that's why they started contributing to the providers themselves. And that's also a reason why they want to see OpenTofu succeed. And so while I can't say anything publicly, in the next six to, to 12 months, uh, the, that landscape is going to change quite a bit. Thank you, that yeah. answers my yeah. question. Thank I you know I was much. like <laughs> tapping and dancing, yeah, 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 that, that's fine. dancing around the issue, but uh, hopefully that, gave, that gives enough context around it. Thank you. You bet. Hey, thank, thanks for this. This has been really interesting. I, I used to use Terraform more in a previous role I had at my last company, and uh, I actually I, I brought it into, um, in, into our company, and so I, it's very near and dear to my heart. Um, I, my, my question is about the partnership that you continue to have with HashiCorp. Um, so uh, there are a lot of different reasons that companies that made something originally open source will kind of pull back from that. And um, you know, I, I, I appreciate that they may not be pulling back from the open source community per se, but does, does the reasons, or at least your sensibility for the reasons that they've, they've made the business decision that they have to, to not support this, which is kind of you know, propelled open tofu forward. Yep. Um, do, you, do you feel that that is indicative of a suboptimal partnership that you'll have with HashiCorp going forward over this, be it, be it more maybe contentious, 
or is it is it something that you think that they did as purely a business decision that they feel that they have sufficient differentiators to not be you know, threatened by the asynchronous development of this in the open source community. You understand the, yeah. the, the, the well, wonderful question, and uh, this is recorded, so I need to be very careful what I say. <laughs> um, so uh, the official party line is that um, Terraform as a language, vital to the internet, and um, as such, we have wanted to, it to be donated to the Linux Foundation for a very long time. And the relicensing to the BSL provides this great opportunity to be like, okay, well, let's get, let's gather together everybody who wanted Terraform to be open, to be in a neutral foundation to begin with, and let's get those folks to work on Open Tofu. And if HashiCorp in the future wants to join us at Open Tofu, we would be thrilled uh, for to see to see that happen. Um, obviously, I can't, you know, I can't speculate to the internal reasons that. Um, uh, you know that HashiCorp has made. Um, I, you know, I, I love the work that Mitchell has done and continues to do on other projects, and I'm immensely grateful for that. Um, they actually have their earnings call in two days, so it'll be super interesting to see uh, the effects of, of of all of this. Um, but I think um, in the last uh, last couple earnings calls, like they're still burning money at uh, I think like two hundred million dollars a year, something like that. And so, if I was you know, at the head of that, I, I, you know, in a, in a world where interest rates are rising and and uh, and folks want to see a faster return on on cash being generated, uh, I can see a lot of pressure for for that for for wanting to burn less money and to try to extract more faster from the from the uh, from the community. Or, um, and then if I take my uh, if I take my Open Tofu contributor hat off and put my Scalar CEO f um, hat on. What we've seen is the, the whole reason why you know, my company is building on top of Open Tofu and has in the past built on top of Terraform is because um, we have not seen HashiCorp execute well enough on Terraform Cloud and Terraform Enterprise. Um, those products have immense potential and there's immense potential for building great collaborative and, uh, tools on top of Open Tofu, on top of Terraform. Um, and uh, and it didn't seem like they are executing very very quickly on that, and so that's why we you know there's been a number of organizations that have uh, appeared to, uh, to to fill in some of those gaps, uh, and so I think uh, like from like wearing that not open to food contributor hat on, I think one of the problems that they have is they haven't been uh, executing fast enough on their commercial projects. Um, and sadly, because of that, they feel the need to kind of do a rug pull on the community uh, to compensate for that. Uh, again, just speculation. I, I do want to iterate that um, I'm very grateful for all the work that, that uh, Mitchell and, and the, the, the HashiCorp folks have done to date. Um, obviously, a split community is never a great thing. Um, we, with all our hearts, all of us welcome them into the Linux Foundation umbrella, and we would love to collaborate with them in the future, and that, that would be the best outcome of all of this. Uh, but in the meantime, we all believe in open source, and we believe in, in, in that. And then there's a great opportunity to build commercial projects on top of that, as many, many co companies have now proven, from, um, uh, from grunt, grunt Works to, uh, to, to Scalar to, to Spacelift and N0 and Terramate and you know, a, a host of other ones. Um, did that? I, I, yeah, uh, yeah. If you have a follow-up, go for no, it. No, no. I, I think that I mean. So, so, so what I'm what I'm hearing is that the, I, I guess maybe just to kind of drill to the salient point, the the commitment from at least from your perspective with your tofu hat back on now. Yeah. Again, um, uh, tofu hat. It's a weird thing to say out loud. <laughs> um, uh, that that commitment from them to collaborate deeply with you on this fork is not quite where you want it to be yet. Yeah, correct. Uh, okay. I, I, I think they would, I think they strongly wish that we did not rally the community around fair, preserving fair. open source. Okay. Um, that being said, I do know uh, that there are plenty of folks at HashiCorp that um, believe in open source and want uh, and, and, and disagree with the decisions that have been made by, by the, the HashiCorp leadership. I don't want to go into that territory territory too much. Um, we it, like the best possible outcome of all of this is the communities join under the Linux Foundation and uh, and instead of having 
uh, split effort that we all you know join and, and collaborate together on, on one project. Um, and uh, and I, I'm opt you know one of the things from uh, that uh, Jim was talking about this morning is is hopeful, right? Uh, I am um, I am hopeful that um, that in the future that uh, uh, that HashiCorp will re realize that it is in their financial best interest to uh, have an open source foundation to, that they collaborate with, uh, with everyone on, um, and, and that there's still a great opportunity for them to build commercial projects on a, an open source base. Um, that might require a leadership change on their side. I don't know, I, and I would rather not speculate on that. Go for it. Thanks a lot. Where, do, <coughs> where does the name come from? <laughs> um, so um, we, it's, compatibility is really, really important to us. Um, and that also meant preserving the, uh, uh, like the TF kind of shortcut. Um, now, if you want to, like the you know, open tofu, if you want to alias that to something closer to what you'd be familiar with, go for it. Um, so that was kind of one of the main reasons. And then, um, and then, well, that's actually a good segue. And then, like, look at all these cute icons we can make with the Tofu logo. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to make stickers of all of these. So if you guys want stickers, just email me, and, uh, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll mail some of those stickers. But um, like once, uh, I know Open Tofu originally was a weird name, and, but it kind of grew on us. But what really uh, convinced us is, uh, is uh, how love like how much opportunity uh, this gives us to uh, to, to make uh, uh, to make good fun marketing out of it um, and so uh, I had I had a lot of fun making these yeah <laughs> yeah um, I guess I kind of went through those last few slides real quick but um, yeah one last question yeah so uh, I believe you mentioned in your slides that uh, Open Tofu is in uh, comparison to Terraform more maintainable, more readable, and has better abstractions. Can you elaborate? Oh, sorry. Uh, that was meant if you are currently not using Terraform or op uh, or Open Tofu, oh. then the reason for moving from uh, from nothing to or from CloudFormation or from uh, to those projects mm. is their like infrastructure as code is more maintainable, more readable, etc. All right. Um, yeah, 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 sorry. Well, Follow-up follow question. Uh, do you have any grandiose plans to make uh, OpenDoFu better than Terraform in uh, some technical respect? Yes. Um, this is where I think I was, uh, I was saying a little bit earlier that I strongly believe that um, open communities and um, uh, just tend to out-innovate. Um, I don't think any of us, one of us, and certainly not myself, have better ideas or have a great, uh, um, we'll be able to, uh, like, by ourselves, make something better. But um, provided that, like, rule number one, uh, oh, compatibility is for as long as we possibly can. And, but that doesn't mean we can't have, if we see great um, ideas from the community, it doesn't mean that we can't have extensions or, or other capabilities. Um, that does mean that, like, as, you know, if we add a capability, and, and you start using it, that means that moving back to Terraform, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but that would be, you know, if you're using that capability, it just makes it harder. Um, but uh, we, I think uh, Marcin from Spacelift is, is putting some thought into this. Don't know when, he'll blog, or when we'll blog about it, but um, uh, we, we are putting together some, some thoughts or guidelines on how we want. So, so the, the, the problem behind the problem here is that there have been, over, the, over uh, the last many, many years, lots of ideas that have um, been pitched to Terraform, uh, th to the HashiCorp folks, uh, that have not made it their way into the project because it competes with HashiCorp's commercial projects. Now, we, like, OpenTofu doesn't have those uh, you know, misalignments, and so we do want to be able to leverage the fact that it's, it's, it's neutral in order to incorporate some of those community uh, ideas. Um, I think uh, like maybe in the next couple months, look for a blog post um, on that topic on what our plans are for um, incorporating, uh, like building stuff that, like, that should have been in Terraform but never made it in. Great question. Thank you. You guys have been an incredible group. Those were some very good questions. Thank you so much for uh, for caring about the community and, and joining us here. Thank you.